Hello my dear friends and thank you so much for coming to my channel. I'm launching this program on how to run your financial house. And my first video is supposed to be about budget, about cash flow planning, money in, money out. But then I realized that we can't really do much without organizing our paperwork. And I can't tell you how often I come across clients that have no idea what is happening with their financial documents. So before we start with all their tax planning, investment planning, retirement planning, all those great things, we have to do our cash flow statement. But in order to do our cash flow statement, we have to organize our paperwork. So you can, by all means, skip this video and go straight to your filing cabinets if, if uh, that's not an issue for you. But if it is an issue, and I know it is an issue for a lot of Canadians, uh, stay tuned. And today I will show you my signature system on how to keep your documents in order. But first, let me share this story with you. It was maybe about five or six years ago when I was just starting out as a divorce financial analyst. And the lady here reached out to me asking to start working on their financial disclosure. And I'm calling once, I'm calling twice, I'm calling three times, I'm emailing, and I can't get anything out of them. I'm asking for notice of assessments, asking for bank statements, asking for mortgage statements, no luck. They looked like really, really nice people. It was husband, he was a truck driver, maybe making just under $90,000. And she was a stay-at-home mom with three kids, seven, five, and three. So I have a lot of respect for women who have three little kids at the same time almost. And I volunteered to come and just take a look at the documents she has and pull out the necessary statements. So came in and while she was uh, preparing tea for me I looked around and I noticed that there was a piece of notice of assessment lying in the bottom of at the bottom of your kettle and I asked very very cautiously let's call this woman Ellen Ellen uh, is this notice of assessment and she said yep this is something from taxes that's exactly how she said it. Something from taxes. And I said, but this is a very important document. Actually, we needed to file your financial disclosure for separation and divorce, but you would need it for your bank, for your child care subsidy, for a lot of different things. And she just shrugged her shoulders and said, yeah, yeah, actually, speaking about child care subsidy, I'm trying to apply for one for years, and it seems that I can't ever get around it. This woman, oh, I should say, this family had no concept of home office. They just didn't have it. It wasn't even a shoebox full of uh, files. It wasn't any crate <laughs> with documents. It just was non-existent. So what we did, we rolled our sleeves and I helped her to organize your files. Your seven-year-old helped us to get the tabs and we did a really nice color-coded system. And then she reached out to me a couple of weeks later and she said, Tatiana, uh, we are probably going to cancel your retainer. And I said, well, I'm actually excited about that. Uh, tell, me, tell me more. Apparently, once she had organized all her documents, she was finally able to collect all the necessary paperwork for her childcare subsidy. She did it. She got it. Her, one of her uh, children went to daycare. It was totally subsidized by the government. Well, this woman got more time, she could spend more energy and her time on running chores. She was less stressed, she could take care of her husband way better, and they stopped arguing. It's mind-boggling. She also added, actually I should say confided, that 
by sheer chance, she was passing by and overheard her husband's conversation with his friend extolling her abilities to do admin work. And it sounded something like, <laughs> you know, Ja, my Ellen, wow, what a woman, what a powerhouse. She did all the childcare subsidy application and we got it. So one of our kids, I guess that was a five-year-old that uh, was in question, is now in daycare. Can you believe it? Like how smart my woman is? She burst in tears because she could see how proud this man was of her abilities to, to do this task. And what I could see from my end is that two people that actually loved and cared for each other could break their relationship, could divorce, could have these three children uh, going from home to home and having trauma for the rest of their lives just because of what? Because of fighting? about the documents. Well, this is a very extreme example, but when I was with CIBC and when I was doing mortgage application or car loan application, and I would ask, where is your pay stub? Where is your notice of assessment? What is your net worth statement? People would say, huh? <laughs> and I would go on and on and on about getting these documents. And I know that most people don't have a proper system. First, we have to find a physical location where you're going to store everything. Of course, you, you can say, Tatiana, we'll do digital storage, no problem. If you know how to do it, Dropbox, OneDrive, cloud services, by all means. But keep in mind that sometimes you need hard copies, sometimes digital copies are not enough. So I'm, uh, I'm an old-fashioned girl and I still like those things to be in hard paper. So I prefer filing storage, like so filing cabinet. You can, of course, look at Amazon today. Everything is on Amazon. But also, you can take a look at Facebook Marketplace. I found a really amazing piece. Uh, this Bombay company, uh, Real Wood filing cabinet is for $75. And I bet you can find something really affordable that would last years. So first, define this physical space and get f not a shoebox, not a fruit or vegetable crate, not any kind of plastic container, actually physical filing cabinet. Secondly, buy those hanging file folders. You can get 25 folders for 15 bucks. Again, Amazon is our best friend today. And most of them already have these clear tabs. Clear tabs with white paper that most people just use for writing whatever is in the file. Don't do this, okay? Just get those folders hanging folders and most of them come with clear tabs if they don't come with clear tabs just buy clear tabs separately also strategically think about your microeconomics if you have business i suggest you have a filing cabinet that is for business if and one for your personal stuff of course if you have a blended family, that let's say you're in your late 40s, 50s, second, third marriage, you have adult kids, you have the whole big financial story behind you, it may be necessary to have one partner's cabinet and another partner's cabinet until everything finally blends in, if it ever will blend in. But at the beginning, it probably will be very difficult to have all the documents together. So the trick is don't write on those tabs. Print the, the file content and I will show you the samples and examples because when you write it doesn't really look legit. The other filing cabinet that I strongly suggest you have is for your home purchases, your fridge separate folder, your microwave, separate folder, piano, carpet, anything over $100, I keep a separate folder. So my system is that anything over $100 gets a respect 
of a separate file. Anything under $100, I organized usually in one folder. It could be kitchen appliances, something 20, 30, 50 bucks. Sometimes I don't keep receipts because I think, okay, whatever. If I have to replace it, not a big deal. But anything over 100, this is my policy, has its own folder. Why is it important and how is it saving you money? Number one, if you decide to sell anything, you get to the folder and you have your original purchase invoice or receipt and it makes it really legit and if i'm buying something off kgg or of facebook um, marketplace or even garage sale if i have an original receipt and i know this item was not stolen was not picked up at the, the garbage side i kind of feel confident about that the second reason the item may break down so how about purchase warranty i in my practice in my personal practice i replaced the three things and it saved me hundreds and in one case thousands of dollars one time it was a mattress it was um, a mattress that had 20 year warranty and i had all the original purchase receipt all the documents and believe me not i reached out the company i think it was silly I spoke with the rep rap came in this immersion and it was more than a um of an entertainment actually and they replaced my mattress they brought me brand new mattress that i would spend thousand or maybe more dollars at the time the second time was a lot of parts for more Moen uh, faucets. They are very proud for their quality. And a few times I had some washers or some parts that were not working fine. I opened my Moen faucets folder and I checked through warranties, called them up, took the picture. They sent me a new part. One time I did it with Wiser lock. And the second time when I did it with the same lock, they actually sent me the new lock. And I would have spent $200 at Home Depot to buy this lock. So having these folders, keeping all the warranty information, all the certificates can save you hundreds of dollars if something goes wrong. If uh, some brands don't cover, don't have these warranties anymore, it's always handy to have these manuals because you can find out, like once I found out that my bar fridge just needed a new fuse. And I replaced my bar fridge once. It was few hundred dollars i think 250 270 dollars to replace that little guy and then it broke again and i thought what the heck and then i watched some uh, good samaritans uh, youtube video that that's a fuse and i went to canadian tire and asked for a fuse <laughs> it was 50 cents so it's something under a dollar i even asked if i can pay more because i was so thankful that it was such an easy solution the other reason to keep everything organized is if you need to amortize your capital assets for your company and maybe there's some entertainment system that you're writing off from your business like for example i'm writing off my camera or my equipment i need those uh, documents in order to keep it on my balance sheet and uh, last but not least the insurance if something goes wrong and you have to claim insurance so you have a flood in your house and you have all the original purchase receipts for the renovation i bet it's so much easier than reconstruct everything from scratch all right we are continuing with our home office organization and as i mentioned previously sometimes not being able to find a document can actually lead to family fights believe me not that is a big reason why people can be discontent with each other so let's not get uh, into the fights because of the documents let's just have everything organized so how do i organize a filing tabs The problem is that we, nobody teaches us how to do it. And if you look at the pre-printed tabs out there, you will be confused even further. No wonder people don't keep their documents in order because anything pre-printed, anything ready to go is usually wrong. For example, you look at something that says bills. Like what kind of bills? Everything you pay is, in a way, a bill, 
Is it a bill for your child's dental work? Is it a bill for your cell phone? Is it a bill for your rental apartment hydro? It, it could be... <laughs> You may not even bother with organizing if your folder will be called bills, because that's a very broad category. The other example would be investments. Like you can have a lot of investments. It could be something from your work. Deferred profit sharing plan, DPSP, or employee stock purchase plan, ESPP, or RSP, group RSP, locked in account. You can have a lot of different investments and you can't keep all of them in one big folder that would say investments. Another example of those, or utilities, the, those are my favorite ones. Utilities don't exist separately on its own. Utilities could be your cell phone, your child's cell phone, it could be hydro in your uh, principal residence, or it could be gas bill from your rental property or your vacational property like what kind of a utility you don't get all the utilities in one spot sometimes i come across people have a big folder that says for example td bank but td bank what <laughs> if it's a bank account that's your day-to-day -day cash flow management if it's your child's education plan that it's more like child's future if this is your mortgage with TD Bank, then this is more like your housing. So you don't start from the name of the institution. You always start from much broader category. How is it relating to you? Is it your housing? Is it your transportation? Is it your child? Is it your retirement? So when you start with those much broader and more high level categories, it's so much easier to find documents because you always start from that high level. Like, what are we talking about? Are we talking about my home? Are we talking about my car? Are we talking about something else? I used to come to people's homes. I would see their Canadian Tire file and I would think Canadian Tire, Canadian Tire can sell you camping equipment, which would be your recreation. Canadian Tire can, can uh, help you change your uh, change your um, tires. Actually, Canadian Tire, right? It could be a transportation. Canadian Tire could be, you know, I don't know, bulbs for your basement apartment, and that could be a rental or even investment. You name it. So Canadian Tire, TD Bank, or anything that specific is usually not a good idea. So how do I? organize those tabs how do we how we do put it all together i have nine big categories that may have multiple multiple items within them so those categories i divided into three big sections the first one is your assets it's easy because it's your stuff your investments, your car, your house, it's like something tangible. Another big section, your income, because we all need income. Whether we get it from business, whether we get it from employment, we need income. And because we get income, we pay income tax. So that's, that's part of this second section. And the third is personal data, whatever it is. So I will give you three in each of those three big sections. So assets, housing, we all have to live somewhere, whether we are renting or we live with our parents or hopefully we own something. So we have this housing expense. Second one is transportation. Are you leasing? Are you financing? How much do you spend on gas, etc.? And the third one is financial. And in financial section, anything that has to do with money. So it could be your bank account, separate folder, credit card, separate folder, pension plan at work, separate folder, DPSP, ESPP, all those uh, different investments, separate folder for each. So the key is you color code those nine categories. And you can pick your own color. Now, the next big section, just so that was the first big section, next big section is income. So I would color code employment documents, your employment contract, your pay stubs, your T4, 
And sometimes you may have um, to keep some correspondence with your colleagues, with your boss, like you never know, right? Second category would be business. But mind you, if you have business business, like I have a business, you don't have just few files for it. You have the whole system. You see just part of it behind me that you have all your business documents organized. But if you have some kind of a side business or freelancing or something, then your files should be color coded. Um, again, if it's a big one, then it's a separate story. You need few uh, cabinets to store this information. And income tax. My income tax is color pink. Because in old days, we would pick up those uh, paper-based tax returns at the post offices and they, they were pink. So that stuck in my head that that's, that's a good color for paying taxes. Pulling out this drawer, you see everything pink. You have to keep seven years of your tax returns. So you do 2021. Yes, 2021. I know it's not over yet, but this video is done in 2021. So you have, oh, you always have create a folder for the current year because you may have a document today at your fingertips that you will need for your next year's tax return why why not to put it right into the folder that is already designated to house this document when time comes in to file your taxes you open it and you on a merry way you go all right the next one the next last section, the third section, is personal da data, personal information. So I divided it into three categories. The first category within this section is me. Um, all my health receipts, maybe some assessments, maybe my whole medical file will be in this document. And my color for me is turquoise. Then you can have me, my hobbies, my gym membership, my cell phone, my dating sites and my dating activity, anything that it's me, me, me. And I got a feedback from clients that I coach of how to get it all in order. They say, Tatiana, it was a really good thing to see so many me files. Just felt like I mean something, like I'm not an empty entity. And I think it's could be quite therapeutic when you have me health, me fashion, me hobbies, me dating, me, 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 right? The next category, of course, if you have children, has to be children. And you see here, if you have education plan for your child, you don't keep it in finances because you have separate category for everything about your children. And if you're one of those parents that have to reconcile expenses for children because you're separated or divorced and you have to compensate each other for certain expenses, please don't commingle kids stuff with your own. It's so stressful. Have this category, whatever color you pick for it, just designated for children. So you have these 5, 10, 15 files with the top of the same color that is designated for children and children <laughs> consume a lot of money every time I meet a couple and they wonder why why is that they are so poor they're so much in debt I ask how many children they have and say well we have two well that's where you two million dollars are in these two kids so children are expensive so for children you can have tutors you can have extracurricular activities post-secondary education daycare you name it. The main reason why it's important to keep all the documents is that when you crunch your numbers for monthly expenses and annual expenses for your children, you need to have quick and easy access to where the documents about all that are located. It's important to know how much is that childcare component in your budget so that you can effectively plan for your retirement. If today your monthly spending is $5,000, you need to project how much will be your spending, your current lifestyle minus childcare. And you have no idea how much money was spent on children that we don't account for. So at least let's have the main categories like dental, medical, orthodontist, extracurricular activities, daycare, all organized. If you are one of those separated, divorced 
uh, parents, you needed to reconcile your expenses. You need easy access to daycare receipts to do effective tax deduction. And if you get audited, you won't be stressed out. Where are these documents? I can't find them. Sometimes, especially in the first, second year of separation, you may be moving from place to place for a while. I moved, I think, three or four times after my divorce. And I had daycare receipts from different providers. Something in Guelph, Ontario, something in Milton, something in Toronto. So I was audited in the year of separation for my daycare tax deduction. And all these receipts had to be collected because they were coming from all kinds of places. Uh, luckily, it was all fine. And because I had it all organized, it removed all the stress from me. Of course, it's a little bit of stress when you're being audited by the CRA, but not as much when you don't know where your documentation is. The other main reason to keep everything together is that you can show it to your children 20 years later and say, you see how much you cost me. But jokes aside, uh, there are a lot of applications. For example, I was maintaining medical file for my son, and that allowed me to successfully apply for disability tax credit because I had his medical history from the moment he was born, uh, how he was assessed for attention deficit disorder, how he was um, testing on learning disability, and all those medical reports, including every single antibiotic he had ever taken, was kept by me to reconcile with my ex. And that didn't happen the way I planned it. But what happened is that when disability tax credit became available, I could successfully apply for it because I had all the medical documentation to supply the doctor that was doing the assessment going further. And it helped me tremendously over the years. So you never know how this particular data may be useful, but you won't go wrong by keeping it organized. And the last category that I have in my personal data uh, domain uh, is legal. So this is where you keep your separation agreement, anything that it's ongoing with family responsibility office, anything to do with your will, power of attorneys, anything to do maybe with your um, other country citizenships, marriage certificate, marriage contract, any interaction with lawyers that you may be suing someone, maybe somebody suing you, you just keep those legal documents separate. All right, so that is um, my, uh, my system. It worked marvelously for me over the years, and you can get it from my website. You can buy it for, I think, $15, this Excel spreadsheet that has three sheets, according to those big sections, and each sheet has three categories. So housing, transportation, financial on one sheet, employment, business, income tax on the second sheet, and me, kids, and legal documents on the third sheet, just for convenience. Of course, you can change your, those colors. You can retype your own names. I made it convenient, and that's why I keep it in Excel. And this way, you, you have it everything done. I have formatted the sizes of the labels so that you can just uh, print them, cut them out, put, those, put them in, into those clear tabs, and voila. What I usually recommend, you can give this to your kids as a weekend project. They can do something useful for you. You can do it yourself. It's very therapeutic. When you see your home office getting organizier and organizier, that's great. And um, thank you for purchasing it. Uh, it's not that this $15 will make me rich, but it will make you do the work. I know that if when people don't spend money on something, <laughs> they usually don't action it. But when they know that they spent $10 or $15 on something, they surely will do it. So it's more even for you than for me. 
But having said that, I always appreciate uh, all the customers that come to my online shop and buy something because it helps my practice, it helps my business. All right, that was it. Let's organize our data so that we are fully prepared to do our detailed, thorough cash flow statement, which will be the topic of the next lesson, lesson two. That was Tatiana Trikova, divorce financial analyst and registered retirement consultant from Fear Split, Milton, Ontario. See you in the next video. And